Welcome Zodiac. This is going to be an all signs reading. We'll time stamp it in the description uh, by sign. And uh, it's got an astrology tarot fusion. So uh, bear with me a minute. It's the first time I've done Not the first time I've done it. It's the first time I've done it in a while. Okay. I want to make this at least a weekly thing. I might like switch to just doing a daily all sign read um, using this system. And what, what I have here is the zodiac essentially. But it's represented by the tarot cards that represent the zodiac the signs of the planets here. And then uh, once I go through that, uh, we will do a reading here using a different deck. Right here we have the Ethereal Visions deck that we're using to represent the zodiac planets and the signs. And we'll be doing the reading with the Gilded Tarot Royale. So uh, let me explain. First you have Aries, of course, the first house. The Emperor represents Aries. In Aries, you have the Wheel of Fortune, which represents Jupiter, and you have the Empress, which represents Venus. So, you know, I believe right out of the chute, there's some value to this, because you already could do a reading, you know. <laughs> if you're in Aries, I mean, I'm a Sag, so this energy is generally trining me. And I have four planets in Sagittarius, Sun, Jupiter, Mercury, and Mars. And so, I'm, it's been rough, I'm not going to lie, um, but I've been growing like a mother. Uh, but right now, with my, my opinion, with Jupiter particularly, which is my planet, and Jupiter is the great benefic, and Venus is the minor benefic. So you have two benefic planets, uh, meaning they, generally speaking, bestow a positive energy, a harmonious energy, I should say, right, um, to wherever they're at by transit. So by transit, they're in Aries. So Jupiter's at zero right now, as we speak. I uh, believe the yeah the Empress is at ten. It's an exact trine to my Mars, you know. So again, that's really good energy by conjunction. Okay, these are benefic planets. So if you're in Aries, um, you're receiving this energy right now. Um, if you're anywhere around ten degrees or any, any between ten and zero, okay, you're really cooking right now right, with the really good energy. So uh, my girlfriend's in Aries. Her son's at four. So. Um, she's in a sweet spot right now. You can see it. She's always in a sweet spot. Super grounded. But uh, so then moving along, we have uh, the zodiac. We have the Taurus. And right now in Taurus, you have the sun. That's at 21 degrees. And by the way, the nodes are at 22. So really, the sun is on the nodes right now. Um, and that's a yearly thing. But you know, it's always a big deal, particularly if you're a Taurus, represented by the hair font and you have your uh, energy of your sun, say. If you're a rising, boy, this, this is really hitting you. Uh, I don't know how much I want to go into all that because, you know, it gets complicated, but um, if you're rising, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of times could be about your body, um, and the sun sign is kind of how we naturally want to exist, you know. That's what our spirit chose to be the main energy that we're going to represent. Um, but it, it's good, you know, the sun is good, it's benefic, um, Uranus represents the fool here, uh, actually, or the fool represents Uranus, so um, Uranus just moved to 15 degrees, which is a big deal uh, for everyone, but particularly, men, if you have that uh, Taurus energy uh, going on uh, anywhere around there, um, this is going to be, this is tough energy with the Uranus transit in Taurus, you know, it's at fall there, um, it doesn't really like Taurus, and um, because Taurus is what's fixed energy. You want to stick with something. And Uranus, in the Fool, the perfect card to represent Uranus. I can always think of the Tower with Uranus, but it actually represents Mars, technically. Uh, but it is good energy. I mean, the Fool and Uranus, they want to take the leap. They want to break things up, but it's always about freedom. So remember that. If you're struggling and you're Taurus, you know, um, the energy really wants to free you right now. And if you're a Taurus in general, this is a big time of the year for you with the sun on um, the north node and the north node in general in Taurus, particularly if, also if you're a rising Taurus, it's a big deal. Um, so um, positive, basically. And, you know, you're being drawn to look really shining light and energy, the energy of the sun. It's got to do meditating and trying to heal using the energy of the sun. So, um that's, the sun is everything. You know, without the sun, it's just cold, dark rocks and nothing. 
Um, so big deal for Uranus. Also energy, we'll talk get into a little bit, uh, that same energy as it particularly squares and trines and sextiles, um, you, you get uh, different uh, magic having to do with the sun in Uranus, trying to break things up and change things for our own good in an effort to free us, right? Now, big deal, just yesterday or the day before yesterday, not only did, uh, did Jupiter go to zero degrees Aries, it's still there, going to be ch chugging through uh, Aries for a while. Uh, Mercury went retrograde, represented uh, by the lovers. Um, here, Gemini, represented by the lovers, and Mercury represented very well by the magician. So it went re retrograde in uh, uh, Gemini. And I think at uh, four degrees now, and that's just getting started uh, with its retrograde. We'll go back into Taurus. So, you know, um, particularly if you're Gemini or I'm a Sag, it's opposing me. Um, if you're a um, Virgo or Pisces, you're picking up this energy uh, by either opposition or squares, and uh, Sag is opposing. And um, so the the retrograde for Mercury. I really don't think it's so much about, um, you know, electronics and lovers coming back. It's a lot about, like, we'll go into this amazing dream I had last night. I'll be writing a little article about it in terms of astrology because I have, uh, right now, Neptune's dead square in my sun and, Merc and <laughs> Pluto in opposition to my natal moon uh, in retrograde. So I'm having pop-off amazing dreams every night. Uh, where I remember words and phrases and things, so thank you, Spirit. Um, so, it, in, and I think, I feel like that's Mercury energy, too, you know. I'm a Virgo rising, so Mercury's my ruling planet, and it's, it's prominent in the way my chart is. And I'm trying to speak here to the natal position, uh, rather than just transit to transit energy, so, you know, it can be more meaningful. We'll lay on a tarot reading in a minute. It'd be like a three-card four for each sign. Um, so, but the Gemini uh, here, particularly with Mercury, it rules Gemini, it's all about thoughts. This is about, Mercury's about how we think in our own minds. It's about our own inner reality of thought, you know, which is not usually thought about, and it's terribly private um, for now. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe, many times even we don't really consider it ourselves, you know, depending on how self-aware you are, right? Um, so that's where I think, like, you, you get these, uh, you can get dreams, um, you can just get uh, thoughts that, you can watch tarot reading and boom, something snaps, uh, read something, boom, something snaps, hear something uh, on YouTube or whatever, and you're like, wow, get realizations, downloads, epiphanies, whatever uh, you want to call it there. Um, and then, um, with Cancer, is represented by the Chariot, and there's no planets there. So, um, now that doesn't mean there's no energy there. We will do a Cancer reading, uh, but keep in mind then, it takes you over to the Moon energy. And uh, when your Cancer is ruled by the Moon, the Moon is the High Priestess. And as I said, right now, today, it is in Virgo, represented by the Hermit here. So we also don't see strength, uh, which is Leo, because there doesn't have to be any planets right there. But what is uh, Leo? The ruler is the sun. So Leo's over here in Taurus. Um, so that's basically going to help you're going to, uh, you know, um, interpret your energy there. Uh, Libra again, there's nothing there. The moon's getting ready to go in there any minute. And um, so you have... Um, Libra being uh, ruled by uh, Venus and Venus is in Aries. So, um, and I think like, you know, you're opposing, you know, Libra's opposing Aries. So it's a big deal, but and, and Venus opposing like your sun or even your AC, that's still not bad. Jupiter opposing your sun. You can look up interpretations, Google or YouTube. Uh, you know, uh, my sun opposing uh, Venus, opposing Jupiter, uh, squaring even Venus, Jupiter. It's uh, some of the least difficult, uh, challenging energy, particularly if squares. So, um, you know, it's, it's not so bad. Um, we're not seeing uh, Scorpio uh, here, represented by Pluto. Um, and Pluto's in Capricorn, most notably in retrograde. So, um, dear Scorpio, you're got to be feeling this energy, okay? No matter 
uh, what's going on um, in your life. I mean, it's opposite my moon, so goddamn, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Um, so, what else do we leave out here? Oh, my sign, Sagittarius. Don't really have anything there. Uh, but Jupiter rules Sagittarius, the Wheel of Fortune. So, for Sagittarius, and again, with Sagittarius, you know, it's trining us. So, good energy. Um, Leo's you're getting good energy from this Aries here. Um, be meaning really harmonious, you know. Can't really complain. So, um, and then, of course, you got Pluto and Capricorn here. Um, we can't forget Saturn at 24 degrees of Aquarius, represented by the star here. Um, and the world well represents uh, Saturn here, um, which rules kind of the world, the physical world, you know, our body, souls enter and leave through the rings of Saturn. It, it rules our body. I've, I've, Saturn's been a big deal for me. Saturn trances are so important in astrology. If you're kind of dabbling in it or you're getting into it, really i think helpful and important and not that hard to look at those two and a half year saturn transits and just go back and see what was going on in your life as they were moving through the different houses particularly um it because saturn it rules the world it always has an impact here for you you know it's why as an astrologer if think of your beginner i mean you, if you go back and just look at you know where was saturn when you get divorced or got married or finished school or lost your job or got a job it's something going on there you'll see it with Saturn um, it kind of helps you get in sync you know with your own astrology you know uh, feel like um, and then you have Pisces uh, represented by the moon and you have in Pisces Neptune that's square my son thank you very much it's at 24 almost 25 degrees to be exactly square my son soon um, and you have Mars still in Pisces, represented by the Tower. Um, so I forget what exactly um, Mars is at, but I think it's approaching that 15 degrees. It's always a big deal. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like we kind of have forgotten about Mars a little bit because in Pisces, it's underwater, you know, uh, but also it's kind of unconscious energy. Well, so is Neptune, and so is the Moon. <laughs> card and so you know is the actual moon it's always about in the fourth house and cancer um, that's all it's the mind but it's the unconscious energy of the mind so um i did pre-shuffle let me put a little energy on the cards we'll start with the general read here for our aries i mainly do love romance and relationships but i'm gonna call this a general read uh, for the Friday of the 13th weekend. You know, tomorrow's Friday of the 13th, and then you've got the 14th and 15th, which is basically like a weekend, we will call it. And um, the big deal <laughs> is uh, Monday, uh, we're going to have the uh, full moon eclipse uh, in Scorpio, 25 degrees Scorpio. So while you don't see Scorpio up here, there's your planet over here, Pluto and Capricorn. So Scorpios, and I'm a Venus in Scorpio, um, keep your arms and legs inside the ride at all times until it comes to a stop. Uh, because this this got to be a ride for you. Uh, if, uh, you know, no matter, it's not that it's in Scorpio, but Pluto's there, it's retrograde. It just turned retrograde. It's going back to like 26 degrees. So um, anything you got going on in later degrees, particularly of Scorpio, you really be feeling that energy. And, you know, Pluto's been really mature starting this retrograde 28 Capricorn. It's been working in Capricorn for over uh, a decade, steadily doing its underground work there, you know, um, that it does. Um, usually you don't see it, you know, unless you're a psychic or just an empath or an energy worker, you might be aware of it or an astrologer. Um, it's just really subtle. It's also in the chart of the USA, the Pluto return, which I'm doing some readings on. I'm going to be doing a series of readings on the Pluto return. I've been researching it, and it's there's like going to there's readings for the next two years. Uh, it's going to be the next two years of that. So it's what has it been doing for the uh, government, which uh, is uh, Capricorn, on the chart of the USA. It's been going in and revealing these uh, secret things, the hidden things, dark things, and. Um, bringing them out into the light, and we're seeing a lot of that. So Aries, let's see what we got for you. I'm going to do 
do these upright. The Ace of Swords, the Nine of Wands, and I'm going to pull through the deck here, so trust me. Trust the cards, because uh, it's like your chart. From the time of your birth, it's a snapshot of the planets, and that's what you're uh, working with for your whole lives uh, in terms of astrology, one way or another, that and the progressed energy. Um, and that's, uh, so it's written into these cards now that uh, we're going to go all the way to Pisces, and Pisces is in there already. So this is not bad energy here. This is like we're going to say this is where you're at in terms of uh, general energy. Um, and this is an air. This is kind of an Aries energy. It's uh, and you remember you've got the got the dove here in this deck that I think is really beautiful for one thing, and you have this Ace of Swords. So this is a, asserting yourself, you know, setting boundaries, uh, setting limitations. It could be for yourself with other people, uh, being honest with yourself. The Ace of Swords, very honest energy, uh, very open energy, very frank energy. You know, it's just saying it like it is, uh, which an Aries can do. Um, this is a, in your challenging position, you know, um, you're tired. Kind of what I get from these two Aries is there's, uh, you've been kind of doing too much. You've been pushing it and you're getting ready to say, whoa, here with this Ace of Swords and set some kind of limit or boundary. You know, could be with someone else, could be at work, could be in your love life, could be with yourself. And it's like, you know, I've. I'm tired of going around with this, and um, you've got one wand left here to get to the Ten of Wands, and I think you're going to use that one wand here uh, verbally somehow to make this kind of verbal um, and statement. You know, it could be a boundary, you know, or ultimatum. It could be given an ultimatum. And then in the future, you get the Nine of Pentacles. This is really great because what that means is you're going to end up being from this, being very balanced. You're going to bring this balance into your life. And the Nine of Pentacles is, um, you know, um, you know, the happy, the real happy bachelor, the balanced, happy bachelor that has everything under control. Um, and from there, we go wherever you want. You know, then you go to the Ten of Pentacles, and it doesn't get much better than that. Taurus, represented by a hair font. Let's get see what's going on with you. And um, remember, Mercury's going to go back into late degrees of Taurus, all the way to 26 Taurus again in the retrograde. And that's, I think when that happens for Taurus, you're, right now you might be thinking about things uh, deeply, whatever it is in your life. And uh, right now with the Four of Cups, it kind of tells me if you're emotionally not satisfied with something. So that's what you're thinking about. I'm emotionally not satisfied with myself with my work, with my life, with my love life here. And here's Uranus. When that, when you're in that energy, Uranus wants nothing more than to come in and break things to pieces, man. That's what it does. It's like, to me, it's like, look at it as the energy of a prison break, most positive way. You're in prison and your buddies are out there and they put dynamite on the brick wall and they blow the wall open, but you know, your ears are ringing and you're stunned and they gotta kinda of drag you out of there cause you're, you're good, you know, half got exploded yourself, but you know what, you're free in the end, you know? So a lot of times with Uranus, the energy's kinda of hard, you know, uh, for us. Um, and, but this shows to me that what you're trying to do is bring this balance. I don't really wanna look at the hangman verse for this. Uh, you're trying to bring this balance to your life and with pinnacles, it's really a solid balance. So kind of the advice is whatever, uh, you're, you're having these feelings where you're not satisfied, really think about them like practically. Um, what can you practically do um, towards to kind of bring a satisfaction to your life and know that there's gonna be some time here. It's gonna take some time. You really gotta look at things differently. And again, that fixed energy of Taurus Mercury's kind of, you know, riling things up in, you know, um, that kind of energy when it goes back into Taurus. It started the retrograde in the, in the shadow phase already, you know, and it's going to, when it goes back in there, I think it's going to really get you rattled and want to change. But this kind of speaks to me, Taurus, of really the hanged man. This is the energy of the retrograde. So going until like, uh, you know, well into June to get past the shadow when it goes uh It'll, it goes back into uh, Gemini here. You'll be dealing with this energy for um, all of May 
and going into um, June. And um, by the end of that, you know, I think you'll be coming to some kind of conclusions, you know, as to what you want to do to kind of relieve this energy of just being not emotionally really fully satisfied, you know, with your life. So Gemini, moving right along, you've got the Three of Pentacles, the Eight of Cups, and the Two of Pentacles. This is kind of similar to the energy of Taurus. And, you know, you've got Gemini kind of bringing Taurus, and you've got Mercury, I mean, bringing Taurus and Gemini together with this retrograde energy. And especially in terms of thoughts but you know with the Gemini this is a good worker card this is like I think one of the best cards in the deck here um, it shows so and it's kind of mercury too and Gemini because it's three the third house but this is being really solid and this is speaking to me if you're a Gemini you're about to get really solid or you're already feeling it it's like it's kind of like what I was saying to, about the Taurus a minute ago it's with the six they had the six of Pentacles and that was the energy of they're trying to get things balanced. It's like, you kind of are. So it's like, I see you, Gemini's being in a pretty good place going into the retrograde. And dude, <laughs> this is 100% emotionally letting go of something, walking away from something, you know. Energy of something with yourself you just don't want to deal with anymore emotionally. Uh, energy with your lovers, with your work, just letting it go. It's really very good here. And then well, the outcome is Two of Pentacles. Now, with the Three of Pentacles and then the Two of Pentacles, guys, just congratulations. By the time that this is over, this retrograde, I think you're going to be in a very balanced place. Two of Pentacles is, uh, when you're doing that Three of Pentacles good work, you achieve the Two of Pentacles, you see him balancing there. It's practically balancing out your life, you know. Um, and... Um, getting everything, you know, you're meditating in the morning, you're working out, you're eating right, drinking your green juice, you're doing your job, you're setting aside time for your family, your lover, your children, whatever the case may be, you know, uh, for yourself. You're kind of just banging on all cylinders, Gemini. So I really uh, like that for you. Um, and then next, uh, Cancer, represented by the Moon card which is in Virgo right now, the High Priestess. Okay, get ready to go into Libra. So, uh, Eight of Pentacles, they're, they're similar to the Gemini read. Uh, the Eight of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles are the good workers card. And both of them, I feel like, are underrated as kind of the best cards in tarot. So, this speaking to a Cancer, it's really been doing the work. I kind of see this, it's practical too, uh, because Pentacles are always practical. Uh, but it's doing the good work of self, of healing, of uh, that kind of thing, spiritual work, doing what's necessary. Um, and what's challenging you right now is the Two of Swords. Man, this is a retrograde Mercury energy can be, you know, a Two of Swords is like, I just don't know, I just don't know. And you could be going around and people say, I just don't know what to do, I just don't know. Or a lot of times if you're in Two of Swords, you're not going around to people, you're, like, you're in yourself just going around, going around which is very Mercury, very Gemini, and Virgo energy too, where the moon is in the last few days. Whenever the moon goes into Virgo, for me, it's like, uh, I feel like the moon is like just terrible in Virgo. It's kind of a, um, you know, um, impediment position because uh, the moon does, it's all about feelings. And when it gets into Virgo or Gemini, it just wants to think. And you know, it's being asked to, to bring those feelings into thought. And that can be what's going on here, you know. Um, and, but the outcome being with the three of wands, your ships coming in, you know, I think all this good work is going to lead to the ships coming in for you. And these are actions. So, you know, you have, you know, really doing the work, the, you know, Taurus energy, solid pinnacle work. Um, right now you're in a period where you just don't know, you're not seeing it. But I'd say by the time the Mercury retrograde's over, you're going to see results from doing this good work, Cancers. Trust me, I'm good. I bet you right now you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, David. <laughs> right? Um, and so, Leos, let's go with you now. Remember, the sun is in Taurus on the north node. So, that's your ruling uh, orb. <laughs> you're ruled, that's why Leos are so cool. And you guys get the spotlight because you're, you're the sun in the fifth house. It's all about creativity and energy and heart and, you know, um, 
but if, uh, right now with the sun on the north node too you got to be picking up some of that energy of um, uh, wanting to kind of align yourself with your soul's purpose and here you have the queen of swords so this shows to me uh, Leo that's uh, you've got the doves here also like in the ace of swords we had earlier um, so it, here at least in the gilded tarot royale deck it kind of takes a little bit of the sting out of the queen of swords so see this is really good energy to be in um, this is someone that's feeling confident you're not afraid to speak your mind uh, you're speaking out we got ourselves in love this is the first time here we, here we are at leo this is the first one where i see love love this is a love reading for you uh leo and because you're being strong and you're being honest and outspoken this is like here i am you know i am what i am i am who i am like it or not i'm not pretending there's no pretension and you're just saying it right and what's happening here is there's a page here with a cup of love and someone digs that you know it could be someone younger than you i get the feeling they're looking right at justice card here the libra card and so um they're thinking about marriage like uh th i get the feeling too uh this could be someone that's really enamored with you they're kind of looking up to you and uh they um they really want to give you your cup of love and they're thinking about marriage and it could be kind of quick though um, like they're kind of immature and they really quickly or like like this could be like the first or second date they're like oh my god i love you i want to marry you um you know i'm a sad so i know i might be down for that it would kind of depend you know and leo's you know maybe um it, just because someone does that on the first or second date doesn't to me and yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not real you know but yeah it is kind of suspect particularly uh, if they're immature uh, but still, it's nice, you know. Somebody's into you, you know. <laughs> what do you think you got? Um, and we're going to go to Virgo, the Hermit, you know, where we have the moon for the last few days. It's about to leave and go into Libra, but at this reading, it's in Virgo. So that's where I'm leaving. We have Temperance. That's Terrace card, Virgo. We have what I call the Creepy Page of Swords. Because he kind of looks creepy. The page sword's supposed to be delivering a message of all the pages. You know, swords are messages, thoughts, communication. But this dude here, he looks like he's getting ready to assassinate somebody. His king told him, I want you to go and deliver this message. Chop their head off, dude. Something like that. Um, um, and chariot, the cancer card here. As an outcome. You know, I really like this. I see this as like a speed bump, a road bump. If you're in temperance energy here, Virgo, um, you, you know, it's a Sagittarius card. And Sagittarius, you know, I'm a Sag. We're known to be laid back and everything. A lot of times we're laid back because sort of we don't give a fuck. <laughs> and and we, don't, we don't really see any problems because we we're not like Virgos. We don't really look at all the details. We could be like, wow, it's really great. Everything's going great. And a Virgo would be like, let me show you why it's not going great. And they'll point out all these specific things. But a Sag is still going to be, eh, you know, whatever. I feel good and everything's all right. So when you're in this energy, you're not seeing red flags. Everything's going along. It's balanced and you're feeling good. It's great energy to be in. But I see this as someone, Virgo, it's like a thorn in your side. It's in, you know, you're just going to go boop, boop over them because you've got the chariot here. And I see this as asserting control, taking control. And this is aligning yourself with your soul's purpose. So this is kind of an important reading for Virgos, I believe. You know, because you're in this good energy. There's someone that's harsh in your buzz. Harsh in your buzz. This page of swords. This creepy page of swords. But you're not going to have it. And you're just going to boop, boop over them, Virgo. And you're going to actually, with the from the temperance moving into the chariot, that's not only moving into a control of your life and everything, but I believe with the chariot, it's actually you're aligning yourself with your higher soul's purpose so that's why this person's like a speed bump uh, they're immature they're page and whatever they're saying that it's like maybe you don't even respond because you're like i understand this person's not even capable of understanding the big picture and i'm not even going to give them you know any energy there virgo so i like that reading you guys are showing strong uh, libras coming up with the ten of pentacles i'm liking that knight of cups I don't know what's challenging you here. We'll leave it. I think we got another love reading here, like Leo. 
The only for two love readings I'm seeing so far. So for Libra, now remember, opposing you, your sun or your first house, you have Jupiter in Aries, the great benefic, and you have Venus in Aries, okay, the minor benefic. So as far as oppositions go, and you can even Google or YouTube that, you know, what if Venus is uh, Venus opposing my AC, quote unquote, uh, Venus transit opposing my natal AC, Venus transit opposing my sun, natal sun, uh, Jupiter transit opposing my natal AC, Jupiter transit opposing my natal sun, um, and see what's going on there. Um, but that's a lot of times can be energy and make, it's going to put your, with the wheel of fortune, you know, <laughs> it's good energy. It's like anything could happen. It's likely to be good, particularly if you're showing up with Ten of Pentacles energy. So you're a Libra that's really solid. You've got your stuff together. Um, you don't, you know, if, if you're looking for love here, um, you, you're not doing it because you're desperate or needy. You know, Libras have that rap, like, always got to have love, always got to have a relationship. No, you've got your shit together. But with this Knight of Pentacles, it's like you want to give your cup of love, but I think maybe you're holding back a little bit here. Um, and you want to give your love to this Earth sign person. Got to be Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus, Earth sign. We got a love reading here. And I think what this reading is saying is do it, do it. Um, that's what I'm getting out of this. It's like uh, go ahead and give your, take an action, because the Knights are always action. Even though it's not um, a Knight of Wands, it's about taking action. It's about giving your cup of love. So it's like maybe you make the first move. And, you know, this person is kind of, with your Ten of Pentacles energy, this is your person, right? You, you earn this, really, like cosmically. You earn this King of Pentacles person. Could be a Virgo uh, person coming in. It could be Cancer. could be Taurus. But I'd say more like Virgo or Cancer, guys. Um... Scorpios. Let's move to Scorpios. Uh, remember, with Scorpios, you have your planet. Pluto is in Capricorn with the devil. So again, I said earlier, for uh, Scorpios, this is significant energy. You know, particularly if you have any planets between 28 degrees Scorpio and 26 degrees where it's going to retrograde. Really, anywhere, anywhere past 15 degrees Scorpio. If you're a later degree Scorpio, you're going to be picking up um, this energy. Not necessarily bad, uh, but it can be, it's a late degree Capricorn for uh, Pluto. It, it's talking about stuff that's been going on in your life for over a decade. That energy that Scorpios are very good with usually, um, depending, right? I'm Scorpio Venus, I get it. Uh, so Scorpios of all the signs are the ones that could be in touch with that deep shadow stuff that's going on well below the surface here. And let's see what your reading is talking about. Three of Cups. Six of Swords. And the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, guys, this is super simple. Um, it, you know, you've been partying. Uh, you've been in, uh, this is kind of some shallow, I, I want to say shallow energy, but I got Saturn in the fifth house, so I'm, a, I'm no fun. So this could just be having a good time. Uh, it could mean there's a th third party, though, going on here. Because, look, you've got the Six of Swords, what's crossing you. And you need to move away from this third party, particularly in your mind. You know, this could even speak to, like, emotional leagues. Cups, you got to remember three cups is emotions. Um, you're thinking back to an ex-lover. It's retrograde, Gemini. I don't like to talk about Gemini retrogrades or, you know, Mercury retrogrades in Gemini. I don't like to talk about them always being about ex-lovers and electronics. But I think in this case, this could be bringing up thoughts about ex-lovers and thoughts about how great it was. And kind of what you're being advised here is, you know, you're kind of only looking at the rosy side of it. Like if you talk to a friend about this, they would be like, do you not remember that they cheated on you and they broke your heart? Because I remember you were fucked up for a long time, Scorpio. And so mentally during this retrograde, I think it's like moving away from that energy. And a really good news, you have the Wheel of Fortune. And where's the Wheel of Fortune? It's over here in um, Aries, at zero degrees Aries. And so it's got really positive energy flowing through Aries here. Um, and so keep it in mind. That's where, you know, this is coming in. And this could be something popping off from you. Like this is moving away from that energy 
into something that comes out of left field and is really good. It's like winning the lottery in love. I think we got like a third love reading here. It's like a weird love reading and because, you know, it's like if you mentally move away uh, from this energy, you know, um, that whatever it was that went on in the past, um, it's like the universe is promising you that I got something juicy for you. The way I look at that too is like... Uh, the universe can't really bring in that new love if we're all hung up on the old love and thinking about them in any way, you know. Uh, let that old love go. Scorpio's fixed emotions like Taurus here. You know, you, you, you get fixed and you don't want to let go. But I swear to you, like, the universe is, like, promising you tit for tat. Let go of that old shit, and I got something really sweet coming in that you ain't even going to realize how good it is, you know with the Wheel of Fortune, like, you're going to be like, I can't believe how fantastic uh, this person is, Scorpio. So, Sagittarius, my brothers and sisters, Sagittarius Sun, Sagittarius Jupiter, myself, Sagittarius Mercury, Sagittarius Mars, and remember, guys, this is our ace in the hole. We've got Venus, the minor benefic, and we got Jupiter, the greater benefic, in Aries, Jupiter at zero. We've got the Empress at 10 degrees. It's trining, most importantly, my Mars. So that's trining, all of that's going to try and Sag energy, that is juicy, that is good, okay? Bringing that emperor energy, making us stronger. This is a great time, uh, Venus is there, asserting ourselves in love, glowing up, all of that. With Jupiter there, look for just good things to pop off, things that come easily. Things that were hard, right, now are going to start to get easy, you know, over the next four months as Jupiter moves through Aries. You know, like you've been trying to open the door and trying to open the door, and now you just go, and the door just is open. You go there, and it's like, well, what the hell door's been locked for, like, the last few years? And now it's just open. You just walk right through. Um, so this is sweet energy for us. Thank you, Spirit. All right, Eight of Wands. Somebody's interested. Whoa. And the King of Wands is going to be real. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is the ninth reading in this weekend read, okay, uh, for Friday the 13th. And Sagittarius, you win, you know. Um, this is just super positive here, you know. Um, I, I, I got to say, I guess this is another love read. This could also be about work. Remember, this is the Saturn card. So Saturn's in Aquarius at 24 degrees. Um, here and they got the star card with the world this hopes dreams wishes here in the star card So I've set up a yeah, I should probably go over this with every sign. I'm gonna have to uh, put in the introduction uh, and a real introduction and ask people to listen to the introduction to get familiar with what I'm doing here You know, but I have all the signs uh, laid out here like an astrology chart with the, also the planets with them, you know, and there's nothing in Sag right now uh, but remember, it, we're Sag, we're all about Jupiter, which is at zero degrees Aries, trining our energy. This is a great time. This is you going for it, absolutely going for it. I think you're interested in a, in a, a, a another fire sign, you know, Aries, Leo here, uh, energy. Uh, a lot of times, this King of Wands is a Leo personality. Could be another Sag, you know. Um, but definitely a fire sign. But I get really more Aries or Leo. Um, and, you know, man, are you attracted to them? And with the outcome being the world, I think you're going to level up. And you could be around this retrograde. By the time it's over in the middle of June, like you might find that you, you really leveled up, Sag. It's because you fucking went for it. Like you say, what is Sagittarius? It's a centaur shooting its arrow at the sun. It's like, and everybody's like, you goddamn fool, you're going to hit the sun with your arrow. And you watch me, you know, you'll be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to try. I'm a Sag fucking Darius. I'm going to try to hit that song with my arrow. Here we go. And this is you like shooting off your arrow. It could be intentions, you know. And I think you're hitting the mark here probably with this fire sign. And you're going to find yourself absolutely winning. And not only winning, but really leveling up. You're going to find yourself at a higher level than where you started, you know, say before the Mercury retrograde. Wow. I like it. For Sag, you know. Uh, Capricorns, you've got the devil card here, and represented by Jupiter. I've got all the signs that have planets in them represented here. Uh, kind of like, uh, think about an astrological wheel uh, with the transits uh, here of the planets in Jupiter and retrograde, most notably 
now at 28 degrees it's going back to 26 degrees so you know in Capricorn so obviously Capricorns if you have a later degree Sun Capricorn risings if you have a later degree rising all kind of energy of transformation you know it's opposing my mood so it's it's on me you know um, it, it's not easy energy you know it's also in the chart of the United States I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, readings about that or ast astrologically oriented not tarot readings um, just um, I've been researching it I mean I got years worth in this Pluto return for the states at 27 degrees Pluto in the United States chart is a BFD and that's why I'm going to be doing these readings about really trying to drill down into it here because it interests me and it also happens to correspond with my you know natal moon opposition to this Pluto so a lot of transformative energy here and remember it's not always bad you know Pluto ultimately it wants to transform you you know from the caterpillar into the butterfly or the moth guys so you got the sincere page of pentacles I don't know if you can see there how sincere that little boy looks you know so this is a Capricorn that means it all right wow okay but something's fuzzy with the moon it, and it's something emotional okay usually with the moon in this position here it's kind of a little bit challenging uh, what you need to do move forward this is something emotionally that we don't see um, the moon right now as I said it's in Virgo but it's getting ready today it'll be moving into Libra uh, but generally it's probably pretty big energy it's like you you really mean it and this could be in terms of love or or work or just life and you're very sincere you mean what you say you say what you mean I love the page of Pentacles that's your energy um, it's and you're like you're ready to commit you are committing you're solid okay but there's something like emotional that you're not seeing that's usually what this is a lot of times uh, Capricorns where you can get help with this if you have a really good friend that you trust and you know you know they have some wisdom about them and they know you and you trust them it's just say, and you can do this with the Page of Pentacles, say like, I really sincerely want to understand what I'm not seeing. Because this is what we don't see. This is the energy that, that it gets me all the time. Because I, I like crazy internal, right? Uh, but I'm always thinking like, there's always something I'm not seeing. That's what worries me. Because we don't know what we don't know, right? And sometimes you can get that, but or from a tarot reading, you know, book of reading. I'm on fire. I'm not gonna lie. Wow, uh, Knight of Swords. So it's kind of like what I was just saying, Knight of Swords. And it's and you know, it's looking. This knight is looking right at this moon. This is someone that can help you. Uh, that's absolutely what. It's kind of exactly what I was saying. There's someone out there that can help you. Could be a tarot reader. Uh, could be astrology read, which really goes deep. But or it could just be. And maybe you have a friend, you know, be careful with friends that are in astrology because there's way too many astrologers, my opinion, um, or even tarot readers. But um, someone out there can cut through this moon energy and the Knight of Swords will bring this right to the surface. He will make it very clear. He or she will make it very clear, which I think a Capricorn would like, you know. You don't like fuzzy. You don't like unknowns, you know. Um, you want solid path so you can keep climbing right I get that so um, then we're going to move to Aquarius where you have the star card here representing Aquarius hope streams and wishes and where we now have Saturn represented by the world uh, by transit here at 24 degrees so if you're in Aquarius and you have that Saturn there anywhere um, around that degree right now you also very significantly I think for Aquarius um, we have the Herophant is Taurus, and you have the Sun, which was mentioned earlier, is on the North Node, it's 21 degrees today at this reading. It'll be exact tomorrow, and you have the planet Uranus just moved to 15 degrees. That's a very significant move. Uranus is uh, slow, and right at that midterm, you know, point, uh, and if it's square, if you have anything from 15 degrees, really up to the end, you, you know, uh, last degree, 29 degrees, you can find that it's uh, going to be squaring your energy in Aquarius. And um, you already got, really right now, Saturn at 24 is squaring the nodes by only 2 degrees. So, you know, this could be like, a, if you just look at it by 
this, I'm going to do a, another reading here for you, but if you just look at the positions of the planets by tarot, you know, it shows that your hopes and dreams and wishes are challenged by Saturn. And so it could actually bring them into fruition, you know. Saturn's not always, let's say 24 degrees, it's not always about denying, um, but if it brings something to you, it's something that's real and something that lasts and something you really worked for here. So let me see what we get, guys. We have the Seven of Swords. That's your energy. So uh, let's see if we got a love reading here. The High Priestess. Wow. And the High Priestess represents the moon here right now I said the moon and this is a representation of the planets not an astrology wheel but with the cards and the moon's in Virgo when I at the time of this reading it might be already in Libra by the time I finish this reading but so uh, Virgo and Libra think about that and then you have the Virgo card right so doubly so um, something going on there so here's what I get out of this you know it, it, you know, if you've been lying, cheating, or stealing, yes. But if not, then uh, it could imply someone has been. Um, but it also, I get the feeling, a lot of times with sevens, I see patterns. Like Aquarius, you could have a history of men or women lying, cheating, stealing, and that kind of energy on you. And that's kind of what you're sitting in that energy. You know, Aquarius is fixed, you know. And swords are thoughts, you know. And so... Uh, a lot of queries uh, are really smart, and but they don't realize how kind of fixed they can get, fixated. Um, now, with the high priestess here being kind of this advice and challenge position, and the high priestess is flowing into this seven of swords, it's like you need to get out of your mind, and you need to get into your feelings and your intuition. Tarot, consider a tarot reading. I'm on fire, not going to lie. <laughs> But, um, you know, uh, this is kind of that energy of really, really getting out of your thoughts, like realizing that your thoughts are not helping you. They're seven of swords. They're really hindering you. And you really got to go down deep into your soul, into your intuitive nature, into the IC, in your natal chart, into that fourth house, into that moon energy. The moon is the IC. The moon rules the fourth house. What's the fourth house? It's the unconscious. Man, I've been having some amazing dreams lately and my stuff going on. Um, but uh, maybe you too are getting, could be getting dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. You know, uh, pay attention. It's not just dreams, you know, Freudian slips. Uh, just uh, things that hit you uh, with the Mercury retrograde. You know, it's a lot about thoughts, Mercury retrograde. It's not so much X's and computers. You know, it's about our, how we, our quality of our inner life. So this could be a time during this retrograde when you just get a thought that really hits you and it'll be one that hits you deep and when you have it it's like ah and then it could be like kaboom and a whole bunch of stuff comes together and what i see you with the hermit here it's going to move you into a place with this i think you're going to you're doing this right now maybe or you're going to do it it's technically a weekend read but it's kind of a mercury retrograde read too we also have the Scorpio full moon eclipse coming on Monday, and that's going to be a kabang, you know. But I think this moves you into really good energy because the hermit, again, we have the moon, you know, and under the hermit, the high priestess here by transit relating to your high priestess you pull here. And, you know, you know he's got that staff, and he's going to knock that snake out of the way. Why? Because he sees it. And, but this represents something internal. So it's something internal having to do with your thoughts that's holding you back, not helping you. Maybe negative thought patterns come to mind with sevens, sevens of swords. And only by pointing your finger at yourself and going internal, going inside with the hermit, do you figure that all out. And I think that's where you're heading. You know, you're heading internal, guys, like it or not. You know, um, so... Always last, but never leaves. We have Pisces. What I have here, Pisces, is the chart uh, set out. It's kind of like the astrology chart, but it's in tarot. You know, we have the Emperor Aries, and we have Jupiter and Venus and Aries, Taurus and Hierophant, the Sun and Uranus, etc. And we go around and we get to Pisces, the moon card, and you have the Hangman Neptune. Big deal. 
and then you have Mars. You know, Neptune, man, it's been so profound in my life. I, I can go back, it, the, the minute that Neptune hit my descendant, okay, the relationship axis, um, I got uh, divorced from 25 year marriage, you know, complicated, but it, it was mutual. It was a heavily unfulfilling relationship, you know. Now, it may not hit you that way, but if it's in your seventh house, it very well might, um, you know. With, but Neptune's very mature now. It's square my sun, but it's almost at 25 degrees. So, um, whatever's going on, this is really deep energy. You know, you have the potential with being a Pisces sun or rising, uh, really connecting with that deeper spiritual self here. You know, I'm going to do a third card reading, three card reading for you guys in a minute here to wind up. Uh, today, and then you also have the tower, which represents Mars and Tarot. Um, so, you know, imagine as Mars goes through, it's I think it's Mars in at like 14 degrees today, I think. Um, so as it goes through, if it hits something in your chart, and Mars really pops off things. You see, it represents the tower. Not always bad. It could be pop off an epiphany and realization. So just looking at the Tarot cards here as a reading, it was like a three card reading for you. And then let's see what the Gilded Tarot has to say. Judgment, that's the Pluto card, which is in retrograde just recently in Capricorn, 24 degrees. So um, let's see, that's a sextile in your energy too, guys. So this is really good. If you are very lucky that this is sextile in your energy because that takes a lot of the sting out of the Pluto retrograde which is really strong you see this devil well represents it uh in capricorn so sextile is the energy like you, it makes it easy for you to use this energy to help transform yourself and maybe align yourself in a new way with this uh hangman here neptune energy um, just speaking about the transit energy and everything let's look at your reading here wow okay it's similar to another reading. It's not really, this, I don't see really a love reading. It could be about love. Uh, but this is judgment call, is being called up, guys. And uh, so maybe this Pluto energy is calling you up again. Sextile's energy we can work with well. We have to focus on that energy. Like a trine just comes. You don't even think about it, you know. And you're good at it, or it's easy. Um, it's flowing, harmonious energy. But a sextile's harmonious, too. We have to look at it and make an effort. So good time to get a tail reading on the fire, just saying. You know, or dig into your astrology, that, that, that too. Um, because there's something probably that you're being, this is being called up. I always think it's being called up. And a lot of times we don't want to hear it. You know, it's being called up to our higher purpose, maybe. Um, and right now, it looks like you're in this Eight of Swords energy. And so that's why I say with, between the two of them, look how similar the colors are, even. You know, um, it's like you're, you're not wanting to see, you know, you can easily get out of these it's like a shades of gray bindings, you know, and you can just take this off, you know, but she's all like, oh, I don't know what to do. And you're kind of going around. This is, Eight of Swords is really going around in your thoughts, like going around and around and around. Eight of Swords advice, ask a friend. If you have a good friend that you trust, you know, they have some wisdom about them, you know, a lot of times they can, boom, you know. They'll be like, well, yeah, you need to do this. You need to lose that guy. You need to change your job. Your job sucks or whatever it is. And it's like you, you're, you you know, and when they say this, you'll be like, I knew that. I knew I needed to do that, but I didn't really want to do it, you know. But when you're getting judgment, man, I mean, you're, you're being called up to change your life here. And it's going to make it a lot better. And a lot of times once you uh, call, heed this call, it's going to align you with your higher purpose and you got the two of wands, you can, you can go on your journey. And maybe there's a decision you need to make too, but you'll be able to make it. Look how bright that is. This dude is ready. Good little backpack, good little hiking staff. It's a beautiful morning. Sun's just coming up. I used to backpack all my life before I got disabled, but it was outdoors with all my life. I like nothing better. Put that pack on all by myself and go for a week into the wilderness. Sometimes I never saw another soul. Yeah, it suited me just fine. Um, so really positive outcome for you guys. Um, it's just, uh, you're going to have to heed whatever you're being called up to, you know. Um, you know, for me, it was like meditating, I can tell you. And then finally, I started meditating. It wasn't so bad. 
I think it's helped me a lot. So, and it was something for years. I knew I need to start doing it. I need to quit playing around. I need to do it regularly. Make it a part of my life. And it was like, you know, Judge was calling me up, calling me up, and then I finally did it. You know, I'm not saying it's meditating, but for for Pisces, honestly, whether you are rising or sun, if you're not meditating, you probably need to. You know, it's just such a Pisces thing. You know, I meditate 15 minutes a day, and that's all. It it does seem to make a difference. You know. But um, whatever it is, you know, by heating it, man, it's going to open up just doors, you know, open up the world, and you'll be able to move into, like, you know, whatever it is you want to move into. So thank you, guys. Um, appreciate it.